So we're going to start chapter four, recursion. So recursion is something you may have already been introduced to in your programming class. Uh, but if you haven't, many students have trouble with the concept of recursion. Uh, so we added some extra examples here in my video that the book doesn't have. Uh, first, we just wanted to show you an interesting picture. Recursion actually happens in all the places. It originally originated in mathematics as uh, defining functions as a function of itself, so using the function recursively in the definition of itself. Uh, this is a picture that's recursive. So here you have a picture, and part of the picture is itself in a smaller version, which has itself in a smaller version, which has itself in a smaller version, and so on. So you can kind of get, this is why recursion is sometimes hard to picture. It's not a natural thing. Uh, you can certainly do it with mirrors, but it's not a natural thing to think about. So definition of recursion, it's a process of defining a problem in terms of itself. And so basically you define a, a problem, or more exactly a solution of the problem, in terms of a simpler version of it, the same problem. So if you can uh, have some problem, and you can imagine making that problem simpler, uh, and then you basically have the same problem but in a smaller scale, and then you imagine that, breaking it down so it's simpler, so you keep approaching the solution. Uh, so we're going to look at that in terms of finding your way home. So here's an example of a verbal recursive algorithm. So how do you find your way home? Well, if you're at home, you stop moving. Uh, if you're not at home, you take one step toward home and now you're closer to home and so now you just follow the formula that we just gave you again to find your way home so you would if you are home you stop moving otherwise you take a step toward home and then you repeat that and so on so you can see that naturally recursion seems very much like a loop So we're going to look at the first Python example of something we're going to solve a problem. We want to have a method or a function that counts down from a number you give it. So you give it a number n, and it should print out 10, then 9, then 8, and count down all the way to 1. So it's a countdown. You can count down from 3, you can count down from 10. So you give it the starting number, and it basically prints out the number until it gets all the way down to 1. So it's a simple, it just uses a while loop while n is uh, greater than, actually this should be 0. Uh, so while n is greater than 0, it prints n and then decreases n by 1 and repeats the loop. So when n is 1, it's still true, it's going to print 1, it's going to reduce n to 0, and then when it comes back here, it's no longer greater, it'll stop. So let's look at this code running. So here, here it is, and I call it a countdown of 10, and we run it and you'll see it counts down from uh, 10 down to 1. It works fine. And we can change that to count down from 5 to 1 and it does works correctly. And there you go. Uh, so let's go back. Now let's look at how would we do this using recursion. So the essence of recursion in Python or any programming has to do a definition of functions. So you're going to define a function that ends up calling itself. So let's look at how we do that. So this is going to do the same thing, def countdown in, and it's going to count down to 1. So the first thing it does is it prints in, so it takes care of the first number, which is where it's starting. And once it's printed in, it basically has the same problem, but smaller. It just has to uh, do itself again. So you'll see, as long as n is greater than 1, it calls countdown of n minus 1. So if we started at n 10, it would now call countdown of 9. So it's calling itself with a smaller number, and eventually it's going to satisfy this. This if will be false, in which case it's going to skip calling itself and start returning. Um, so that's it. Let's look at it run. So here's the recursive of countdown, print in. Now I put a little code to put all the numbers on the same line. So it's the only difference from the last version. So it prints in, stays on the same line. If n is greater than 1, it calls countdown. So if it just printed 1, 
uh, one is not going to be greater than one. It won't call countdown again. It'll start returning. So it'll return, and so if, and so let's see how this works. And I have countdown from ten and countdown from five, and you see it works great. No loops are involved. So in fact. There are languages, uh, specifically uh, Berkeley used to speak, uh, teach a language for their computer science course, was different from everyone else, uh, called Lisp, and then for a long time they did a language called Scheme, which is similar to Lisp, and both of those languages uh, had no loop or in their, in their language. They didn't have a loop. They didn't have a while or a for or a do while. They didn't have anything like that. You, if you wanted to do a loop, you always used recursion. So it's perfectly possible to, to get rid of loops in your programming language, and as long as you have functions, uh, you can do recursion. So here's the book example, is to sum a list. So this is going to be a little bit more complex. So we have a, we want to sum a list of numbers. So we, we pass it a list. So we're going to define a function that you pass a list to, and it should add these numbers together and return that. So think about it. Plus operates only on two operands. So whenever you think about recursion, you want to think about what step can I make to simplify the problem to a smaller problem of the same thing. So in this way, we can say, well, a smaller problem would be uh, let's, let's uh, handle one of these items and then call ourselves to get the sum of the smaller list. So we can get 2 plus the list of just 5 and 10. Then the smaller list would be past 5 and 10. It can get the sum of 5 and then a, a list of just one item. So we eventually get down to one item. Uh, now that's what the bother does, uh, but you also have the choice in recursion. You can get down to where you have no items. So if you're summing and you get down to, if you pass a list with no items, you know the sum will be 0 because there's nothing to sum up. So that's how I'm going to write my code. So uh, thinking about how plus works, you can do a sequence like this. So basically, if you if you have a method that takes a list of three items, then you inside the method you take the first item on the list, and then you call sum with a list of just two items. And then when that gets called, it breaks it up so you get five plus the sum of the list with just the last item. And when that gets called. Uh, you break off the 10 and you sum 10 plus the sum of the list with no items. And so inside of this method, we have a test to see if we have no items. And if we have a sum of empty list, we return 0. That's basically defining how we're going to do it. So here's the code. Uh, sum a list. So we pass it a list. If the length of the list is equal to 0, we return 0. So that's when we want to stop. And otherwise, we return the sum of the first item in the list, uh, this is the continuation to go to a new line, plus the sum of the rest of the items on the list. So this is the slice operator, which is getting the rest of the list starting at the second item. So let's look at this code. Uh, sum a list. So here it is right here. Now this continuation operator, uh, the author may have mentioned it in chapter one. But if you have a Python line that's longer than you want to put on one line, like on the slide, you can split the code on the two lines and put this that says continue the statement I started onto another line. Uh, you can also just, since this really isn't that long a line, it was just long on the slide, I can get rid of the continuation operator like that and just return the sum of the first item and the calling the sum list on the rest of the items. So I have a little test here uh, just to introduce you to different ways of testing. So what I want to do is I want to pass it a list. Uh, it's going to sum up the list using a built-in operator in Python. This automatically will sum any list. So it gets what I expected. And then it has total is calling our method sum a list to get the, and these should be the same. So then it prints testing sum of a list is uh, the expected value, so it prints what it found, and then it has an assertion statement. So it asserts expected is equal to total, uh, and if it fails, it's going to say list, uh, and then it's going to print out the list is, and it's going to print the total. So you'll see how it failed. 
and so we'll go ahead and run it and it's going to test it on uh, a list of four items an empty list so you want to check special cases an empty list is a special case and perhaps one item is a special case so we also test it on one item and then we give it some bigger values so here's a list of five items with some big values so let's go ahead and run this and it just says it's testing each one and it gives the result of the test so you can see it and there's no uh, the assertion never failed because I didn't get a fail exception in here so all the tests worked so let's talk about actually how uh, how recursion works there are three laws of uh, recursion and the author points out like the the robots of azimuth recursion must follow three laws so for those that have know what I'm talking about you'll know what I'm talking about and everyone else you might look that up so uh, a, recursion, a recursive algorithm must have a base case. This is the, the test you have to do for it to stop. So you have to have a test to eventually stop the recursion. So stopping recursion means you will no longer call itself. It will just return from the uh, function, uh, either return a result or return depending on what it's doing. A recursive algorithm must move toward the base case. So every time it calls itself, it has to call itself with a smaller problem that's approaching the base case in some way. And a recursive algorithm must call itself recursively. It can call itself either directly or indirectly, but it has to end up calling itself. So those are the three laws of recursion. Any recursion in any language follows these three laws.